Good afternoon, everyone. First thing first, I want to introduce uh, Claire, our chef today. I met with her twice. I was quite impressed. <laughs> I tried to have her help us not only cooking the gourmet Westwood, but also practical. We can do it at home. And I am uh, Dr. Jiao Ping Li from the Center for Human Nutrition. My passion is to help uh, everyone with nutrition, not only prevent disease, but also treat uh, disease. Shall we start, Let's Chef? Let's do it. Yes. Let's do it. Welcome, okay. everyone. Happy to have you here. I hope you're looking forward to cooking. I'm going to walk you through all of the recipes. Like Dr. Lee said, they are everyday recipes that you can make at home. I will talk you through other ways that you can make it that's easier, um, other ingredients that you can use that you may already have in your fridge or in your cabinet. Okay, the first recipe we're going to start, it's a brown rice risotto and it's going to have butternut squash, roasted butternut squash, and these really yummy kale chips. You can change this recipe if you, are, if you don't like kale, if you don't want to make kale chips, you can't find kale, use spinach, saute yes. some spinach, saute some arugula, and at the end, yep. you don't even have to saute, you can just throw it right into the pot. For those of you who uh, never seen a kale, this is a kale. And the reason is we may end up having other people from other part of the country watching us. We think it's very routine, but many part of the country do not know what kale looks like. Thank you. Yep. After that, we are going to make a bulgur pilaf with a pan seared chicken and a really yummy lemon sauce. After that, we are going to make a cod dish with some delicious tomato butter. There's no butter in this, it's just butter because it's kind of spreadable. It's gonna be very velvety. That will be on top of your cod with a really delicious garlic and olive uh, tapenade that's gonna go on the top. We're gonna to bake that off and eat all this stuff a little bit later. After we do that recipe, we are going to have a delicious fresh strawberry smoothie. Very easy to make at home. So should we get started? Yeah. Excited? Okay. Have fun, ask questions. I want you to leave here learning something. Right. So we're going to start with a vegetable dish. And we know that is the essential for our life. And we're also going to have a chicken dish. So you will have combination of veggies and healthy protein. The last dish will be cod. That's another very good source of protein and easy to digest all three dishes, and that will be good for our patient going through chemo or after uh, WIPO surgery. So that is the goal, uh, what we are doing those three dishes. Along the cooking, ask me questions. I will explain to you why we choose this ingredients versus others, and what can help us as well. All right, our first meat, remember that word? That is this beautiful pot right up top here. Bring that down in front of you. Take everything out of that pot. That's the pot we're gonna cook in. So go ahead and take everything out of that pot. I'm gonna do a quick demonstration. Your garlic has been chopped for you, but I do wanna show you how we do it here, fancy style at Sur La Table. We have our little garlic roller. We have our piece of garlic. We're just gonna put that right in there. And oh, isn't that pretty? It comes right out. Oh, I love that. That was great. And we're gonna small dice our garlic. So we're gonna leave that root on. We're gonna take off the base, and so we have a nice place for our knife to run through. We're gonna take our knife, we're gonna run it through about, about three quarters of the way. We don't want it to break in half because we want that root to stay there and anchor everything together. Then I'm gonna take my knife as unawkwardly as possible, and I am going to just slice, very small slices, right into this piece of garlic. Yep. It's all stuck together, still together. Then we're going to push it into the knife and you have your perfect little dice. You like that? Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and put our pan up on our induction burner. This is an induction burner. Good, I want you to turn that pan on. Let's do 800, I think we're good on 800. Turn that on, it defaults to 1200, so go down to 800. So do you see that oil that's in that little, those are called souffle cups. I'm gonna refer to those all, all day long. So grab the little oil of souffle, the souffle cup of oil, pour that into your pan. Something that looks like a red onion, it's a shallot. Grab that shallot and drop that in there. Drop that into the oil. Good. I want you to grab your wooden spoon. You also have a nice little crock of salt. It looks like a little white ceramic bowl. That's salt. I want you to add a little pinch of salt, just a little one. 
Vegetable-based oil is pretty good. The reason we actually start with the oil and the, uh, the, we put it in onions is because onion together with garlic all belongs to the spice family. We're talking about antioxidants all day long. The truth is, if we weigh the same weight, compare them weight by weight, spices have a lot more antioxidants than your superfood blueberry. Okay, it's just yes. And if you aware, you know, you at that, you can understand what they can add to our daily cuisine. Also, a very strong food for our good bacteria in our gut. Let's keep sauteing. The reason we use oil, in from a science point of view, we're using the oil to extract all the nutrients that are soluble in fat. So when you are sauteing, you actually getting all those nutrients out even from the garlic and the onion. Let's get our brown rice sauteed in all of that wonderful oil, garlic, shallots. So we choose brown rice today as a representation of uh, whole grains. And a lot of us only knows, you know, the brown rice and the water put on the uh, rice cooker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to tell you that is actually not the only way we can enjoy a, our whole grain and like a brown rice. Go ahead and add a little bit more salt. I want you to a little pinch of salt. We're going to do that in a second. Yep. Now yes. go ahead and add this uh, oregano. I want you to add the oregano, but I want you to put it into your hand first. Put that oregano into your hand, and I want you to just crumble it into that, into yeah. your rice. Good. That's the third spice we're adding in. Let's go ahead now and add our white wine. This is white wine. Sorry. Yes. Add it good. Add your white wine. I want you to add one more pinch of salt. One more little pinch of salt. As soon as that wine has evaporated, because what we want to do is we want all of those beautiful toasted um, grains, we want those to really soak up that wine. Once that wine is almost evaporated, then we're going to add in the broth. That's actually homemade vegetable broth. Homemade vegetable broth. You can use chicken broth. You can use beef broth. This is homemade vegetable broth. Vegetables that have been thrown into a pan with a bunch of water, covered in water, and I leave it for about four hours. And it turns into a wonderful stock, that's that. I do about half of that in here. Good. All right, darlings, now what we're gonna do is let's add two more pinches of salt. And I want you, you have pepper mills. Pepper is great, right? It's gonna add a little bit of earthy depth. It's gonna add a little bit of spice. So we Good. add another spice to it. I also want to explain to everyone the reason you add salt, pinch here, pinch there, you don't want to one part of the food is overly sauteed yes. already. Yes. So you add more, you just add a little bit more. So you add more broth, now you dilute it. You know, everything is going to be less salt, so you add a little bit more. Try to keep the salt always about the same amount. Yes. The olive oil typically is better for a dish you put on the plate already. Otherwise, the temperature also is not good, high enough, so the food wouldn't be taste as good if you would intend to for a high temperature. So these are actually, these are done. What we're going to do is turn them off. Our kitchen assistants, Jason and Michelle, are going to gather those and we're going to put them in the oven. They're going to put a lid on them. They're going to put them in the oven for about an hour. Once they come out of the oven, we're going to add some Parmesan cheese and a squeeze of lemon. We're gonna pop these into the oven and they're gonna be ready to eat in about an hour, okay? So that's our risotto. These here, I showed you before, these are our kale chips. The easiest way to make a kale chip, if you wanna make a kale chip at home, this is called dinosaur kale. It's not your typical kale. There's two kinds, a little bit more expensive, but I like it because, actually, I'll be honest, I don't like kale. Oh my Lord, I just admitted that on camera. I don't like kale, but if I'm going to eat it, it's going to be dinosaur kale. It's a lot sturdier. It's a lot better to make kale chips with. You'll notice if you ever make kale chips with regular kale, you better get there fast. Don't leave them in the oven too long or they turn to dust. So I like to take the membrane and I like to just pull off just like that, see? And then what I like to do is just pull, pull little pieces. You don't need to use your knife. This takes no time at all. You're just going to pull little pieces. Put them onto your tray. 
just like this. And then we're gonna grab our mix. Right here is our mix of our olive oil and our grape seed. We're gonna do this, just a little bit of oil. We're gonna add a nice little pinch of salt, if I knew where my salt was, right here. We're gonna add a nice little pinch of salt. You wanna put a little crank of pepper on there for me? You can add curry to this, like a little curry powder. You can add a little spicy red pepper to this. Perfect. And I'm gonna have Michelle pop that into the oven for us. It's gonna be about 375 and we're gonna check it in about seven minutes, okay? If you do spinach or others, be, be uh, quicker, I would think. Yeah, yeah, and I wouldn't suggest, let me tell you, I wouldn't spe suggest spinach chips. I just, it'll just wilt. Yeah. What I think if you want to, if you're kind of over the chip situation, all you have to do is just take a bag of spinach. At this point where we're at right now, you're just gonna throw that spinach in there. It's gonna wilt, we're gonna put the lid on and you're gonna put it into the oven. Yeah. Super easy. And that's gonna give you a lot more nutrients. It's gonna give you your greens. Yes. That's what we're looking for. Here's our butternut squash. It's already been cubed for you. We're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna roast our butternut squash. I like my butternut squash to get that nice crispy caramel on the bottom. The way to do that is put it on high. So we want it about 425. Again, we're gonna put a little bit of oil on that, just a smidge. We're gonna put a little salt on this. My friend over here is gonna put more pepper on. So you can see the vegetables. We had uh, four different spices already into it. We have a green vegetables, Thank you. anything you it. like. Thank you. Now we get orange. The orange group, remember, has a lot of beta carotenes. Also, those squash will give you the very healthy carbohydrates. So we talked about how to strike a balance. Our body needs carbohydrate as energy, but we do not want to oversupply our body. So the best carbohydrates really come from vegetables and whole grains and some fruit as well. So we'll get a dish later on into that. So the other um, benefit of that is the sugar won't rush into your blood, like you drink a soda pop or have a piece of candy. It will slowly release to the bloodstream, so you wouldn't have this huge peak uh, in your blood that will trigger insulin response and all those things you don't want to happen. So that's why. That is how human beings evolved over millions of years on vegetables, pretty much. All right, and I just wanted to show you, for those of you that don't know, this is a butternut squash. You can find this anywhere, especially getting into the fall. Delicious. Very easy, I'll just very quickly show you kind of how we break one down. You need a good knife, and you're just gonna cut that top off. We're gonna cut straight through the middle. I don't cut my finger off. Cut straight through the middle here. I like to use this side first, so what I like to do is peel it. Just get a good peeler. I'm not gonna peel all of it because I know you don't wanna stand here and watch me peeling. We're gonna peel just like that. And then once it's all peeled off, I'm gonna put it up just like this. Yep. I'm gonna slice through it again. Hope it doesn't fall on the floor. <laughs> then I'm gonna do this. Oy. And then I'm gonna cut off that end. Yeah, and then we can just cube it. Just like that, you can do large cubes or you can do my favorite little small cubes. For those of you actually even want things easier, you can buy frozen one as well. Frozen pre-cut and they are almost as good as the fresh. Those frozen ones, including strawberries we buy frozen, usually are much more ripe. They actually taste better. Those are the ones who are not able to bear the transportation from the field to the uh, store, so they have to freeze it right away. All right, ready to move on? Let's move on to our bulgur pilaf. So let's go ahead and grab this mise right here that has the chicken in it. You'll see some diced carrots and some diced celery. Grab that, bring that in front of you. Pick one person to take that chicken and put it on your board and just kind of let it hang out. Good, you can put that chicken on your board, perfect. Take everything out of there. Okay. I love it. All right, so let's go ahead now and let's turn on our induction burner. Let's go to 800 again. We have some good questions, so I don't want you guys to feel rushed. I'm gonna show you how to measure three tablespoons of olive oil, okay, without using a measuring spoon. So you're gonna do this. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. 
Can you do that right now? So just stand over. Oh, it's my favorite. Good job, team. You can move that pan around. If you have a little silicone brush, you can always brush the bottom. Let's go ahead and what do you think we have here? Just what we used before. This is our shallot. Let's drop our shallot in. Good. Good job. Take your spoon. Let's saute that around. I want you to add a pinch of salt. Add the carrots and celery. Dump those in there. So we just had a question about salt. Where does most of our salt come from? The salt we take into our body every day. What's a major source of uh, salt? Well, I have to tell you, the salt you are just handling, you feel so nervous about adding salt, is only about 15% of salt every day you're taking in. Most of your salt will be coming from sausages, hams, and even bread you buy from the store. They have added the salt for you. So feel free, not as nervous, adding salt to your fresh vegetables and meat. They actually don't have much of salt to start with. So that is not the major source of salt you will consume. So not as nervous. And the little bit yeah. that I'm having you add is only to develop the flavor. Yes. I'm not having you add anything you can't handle. I'm not having you add anything that your body can't process. This is just to develop flavor. It's so for pinch. all of us, we should have about 2,000 milligrams. Each pinch, you probably add a 10 the most. Okay, so it's not much at all. So you hear the thing, a lot of food we buy from the store, we cannot tell how much salt in it by how it tastes, how salty it is. Often they add sugar and butter, and then the taste is completely changed. So you cannot be relying on, oh, this does not taste salty at all. It may already have quite a bit of salt. All of us actually, believe it or not, right now we're standing here in our blood, only have about teaspoon and a half sugar in our blood. Our blood cannot take more sugar than that. Or if you don't know how much a teaspoon, the squares, each square is five grams of sugar. Our blood is only have about a cube and a half. So when you take a piece of bread, okay, that's 50 grams, 10 cubes come in, immediately get into your blood. There's a huge surge of blood, and that triggers insulin response, and then the insulin does is driving all the sugar into the cells, including the tumor cells. So they take advantage of uh, growth. And so that is the concern. You hear a lot about not overdo your sugars. We're gonna squeeze our lemon in there. Make sure that the skin is looking at you and all the flesh of the lemon is matched up with those holes on the bottom. Got it? This is what you want it to look like. And you're gonna squeeze that in all around. Yeah, lemon gives the freshness. It has a vitamin C. It also adds a little bit of acidity to your food. Add another pinch of salt. Yes. Now this here is ground up thyme. You can use fresh thyme at home if you want to. You can get dried thyme, but if you don't have the thyme, haha, <laughs> saw what I did there. You can just go ahead and grab this stuff that's already been, um, it's, it's all ground up for you, so it's easier. Right. Let's add that into our bulgur. I actually have a little uh, bottle at home. It's all different kinds, you just put it in. But try out how much you like. It has a very strong flavor. This is again, thyme is another spice. We just add it in to, to our dish. Go ahead thyme. and turn off your induction burner. And I want you to give your bulgur a taste. We have little tasting spoons. I want you to give your bulgur peel off a taste. So bulgur is like a cracked wheat, kind of, yeah. And this has already been cooked. I cooked it for you so that we save us a little bit of time. You can use barley. You can actually, you can use any of these yeah. to make this peel Look at off. That. This is farro. If you've never heard of farro, it's like a, a less glutinous uh, pasta. Then we have here, this is a tricolor quinoa. You can use quinoa. I don't love quinoa gasp, pores. <laughs> I know, it's awful, isn't it? 
that is great to use as well. Or this is like a, this has black rice in it. This is a rice uh, medley. This is a California rice medley. You can use that too. So these are very versatile ways you can change up your recipe. If you're not a fan of bulgur, I think right. bulgur is great. So the whole grains, anything you can pick up. Yeah. And like you, I have just heard, if you like strong flavors of, you know, Thank thyme, you. you can put it oh, in. If you like pepper, you can put a little bit in. And anything you like. So as you can tell, it's not that hard. And now you also see your whole grain does not have to be cooked with just water and a rice cooker. Okay, we're gonna move on to searing our chicken, but what I need you to do is you're gonna get all of that bulgur peel off into this glass bowl we gave you. So pick up that pan, good, and get that in. Be very careful, good. Electrolytes. Electrolytes are mostly the metals. Uh, it was the, they actually mostly come from food. It's not necessarily you drinking, like Gatorade or Crystal Light. Most of the electrolytes is from vegetables. If you now cook, you add mm -hmm. the salt. Salt is number one, the electrolyte, sodium. And in the vegetables, you have a lot of potassium as well. So you're already getting it. Okay, we are gonna use the same pot we made our pilaf in for our rice, I mean for our chicken. Go ahead and grab your crew out of oil. We're gonna do three more of our tablespoons. Remember our Mississippis? I want you to turn, good, good job. And remember, don't be shy. Like Dr. Lee said, you're not gonna be eating all of that oil. We just need that oil to grease the bottom of the pans so that we can sear up our chicken nicely. So go ahead, turn on your induction burner. We're gonna turn it up to a thousand. <laughs> Whoever has the chicken on their board, someone has chicken on their board, I know it. What you're going to do is you're going to put a little bit of salt and pepper on both sides of that chicken. If you're uncomfortable touching raw meat, you have tongs right here in your silver crock. On both sides? Yeah, let's yes. do both sides. Actually, it's very important to add the, uh, um, the, sh the peppers to it. It's not only for flavoring, actually protect the proteins in the meat. Uh, it also pro uh, protect the protein during the time of cooking. All right, well, I can hear it. What I want you to do now is take your pieces of chicken, only the pieces that will fit. You don't need to crowd them. So I'm thinking three, maybe four. You're gonna lay your chicken into that oil and it should sizzle, right? And you, right? Ah, beautiful. I can hear it. Okay. We can smell it too. And don't touch it once it's all in there. We just want it to brown. Don't get frustrated with it. So if your piece of chicken is sticking to the bottom of your pan, it's not ready. It's telling you, don't move me. I'm not ready. I'm not done. I'm still working. Beautiful. We want a nice succulent piece of chicken. Use that word often, succulent. You could replace the chicken with a steak, but bear in mind, the steak is harder to cook, has much tougher texture, also have more fat into it. Um, so you may need a little bit longer time. But if you do cook steak, it needs to be sliced about the thickness of a chicken, no more than that. Otherwise, it's gonna be harder to cook. It's harder to digest overall really shortcut is if you don't have much time today for dinner and slice the chicken to smaller size. Yeah, you slice them. I even get down to the size of the, uh, the squash. They're much easier. They, you don't have to measure temperature as long as both sides turn white. Go ahead and turn off your induction burner. Your chicken pieces look amazing. So once we have those off, wonderful Michelle is gonna collect them. She's gonna make sure they have hit an internal temperature of 165 and we're gonna move on. I'm gonna make you a little pan sauce though if you wanna look up here. When you are doing something like this and you're making a pan sauce, try not to use a nonstick pan. You're not gonna, all, see all the wonderful bits on the bottom, that's called the fond? Mm -hmm. That's on the bottom of your pan. You really want those for your pan sauce. You wanna grab a, a nice um, whisk and once you pour in all your liquid, you're gonna move that around and all of that, those wonderful, we call them nasty bits, are gonna come up from the bottom and that's gonna be in your pan sauce. You're not necessarily gonna get this and everyone's gonna yell at me out there for saying this because I'm bagging on the poor nonstick, but you're not really gonna get that with a nonstick, 
okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on about a medium. That would probably be about 800 to 1,000 watts. That's okay, you don't need to, I'm just gonna do it up here really quickly. Unless you wanna come up here and help me, because I love people to come up in here. You wanna come help me? Yes, I'm so excited. All right, so I want you to take that lemon. First things first, you're gonna squeeze that lemon in there right up here. Yes. Please, good girl. Okay. All right, Elgi. Beautiful. Now I want you to add this right in here. That is our broth. I'm going to steal our neighbor's whisk. I should have had you done, do that in your pan. It was a lot better. You don't want to help me anymore? No. <laughs> <laughs> so all those wonderful nasty bits would come up at this point. And this is called getting up the fond. That's what you would do on the bottom of your pan, okay? We're gonna let it simmer. We're gonna let it kind of reduce a little bit. Um, if you can, probably not a good idea to use butter. Is that true? No, you can have a small amount, the yeah. butter. And truly, like a teaspoon, you know, amount is not a problem. This is mostly concern will go through you. Your body cannot handle. So get a, you know, one square or, you know, um, that much is not a problem. And I think if you're gonna use a small amount, it's better actually just go straight ahead and use a small amount of real butter. And because that is further processed, it's hard to know what is in it. And you may do well, particularly like you, this time, if you will buy a different brand at a different time, it may be different. So if you're gonna use a small amount, just go straight to the butter, it's fine. I'm gonna add in this wine. It's a lot of wine. If you don't want to add in the wine, I know, right? If you don't want to add in the wine, just add in broth instead and use a little bit more lemon. Yes. Use just a bit more lemon because the wine really is the acidic flavor. It's kind of pairing with your lemon. So a lot of people don't want to drink that wine. They don't want to put that wine in their food. That's fine too. It's not going to really change the flavor. Just use a more, probably a more luscious broth, like a chicken broth, I would say. Um, veggie broths don't have a whole lot of flavor, so use a chicken broth and then do an extra squeeze of lemon. Right, the, the, the wine actually, it is uh, helping, like I said earlier, it, you know, get some of the compounds into, you know, the uh, liquid portion of it. It also helps digestion to break it down. And for those of you, you know, think of wine, oh, I don't want to add it in. It's also existing widely in our food. How many of you have drinking the kombucha? Okay, be careful. A lot of times, the kombucha has a lot of alcohol. And what they do is they have different strains of bacteria in it. They first gonna make it produce alcohol, and different bacteria come in, and then break it down to uh, acid, or give that like a sour taste. If you don't do well, when the bacteria supposedly metabolize the wine, it's not grow well, then you get a lot of alcohol. There are people who get the tickets from the cops. Uh, yes, without knowing, they actually consume significant amount of alcohol from those. Yeah. Alcohol is a really a result of fermentation. Grapes is here in Japan will be from rice. I'm just gonna zest in a piece of garlic. This is just gonna add a little bit more flavor. Right now what's happening is all these wonderful juices are just gonna kinda caramelize and it's gonna break down and reduce. So I'm just adding my garlic. If you don't want to be fancy like that, what I do is use a knife and just um, pat on the garlic and just use the knife as we have been shown and then chop them, put it in. And also for those of you who say, oh God, I have dinner, after dinner I have uh, another event, I'm gonna go to a concert or something, I don't wanna have raw garlic, cook it. Once you cook it, you won't have the uh, smell afterwards. Mm -hmm. So all of that is changed during cooking. Mm -hmm. And actually, or you can you know, put it in the oven. Once it's cooked, you don't have to worry about that. The best electrolytes, or when you really have trouble consume anything because of any reason, appetite or digestive issue, I really recommend put a whole chicken with, you can put some you know, onions, gingers, vegetables, salt, and bring up the high, yeah, 
quite a amount of yeah, upgrade. Yeah, you want to cover it. Yeah, cover and then it cover the water and uh, simming it through, and that is digestion. All the amino acid, all the nutrients is getting into the broth. And then you can really just drink the broth. You get the electrolytes, you get basic amino acid, some peptide, a little bit larger molecule than the amino acid. And so you get uh, your nutrients that way. If you truly want to use it not just for kitchen aid or cooking aid, you want to use it as your nutrient and cook it yourself you will know the chicken disappears into the soup. All right, you ready to make okay. some of our uh, white fish now? Okay, yeah. so you see that pan that has the olives in that? Bring that in front of you. So let's take everything out of that pan. We've got olives, we've got wine, we have lemon, we have that ground thyme again. You also have a clove of garlic in there. Okay, let's get our fish cooked. Let's turn on our induction burner. Let's go, let's do another 800. Let's go to 800. <laughs> Good. So I just want you to take your cruet of oil and I just want you to drizzle some oil in there just like that. It doesn't need to be so serious. Actually, I lied. Turn up to 1,000. Nah, we don't need that much. But right now what I want you to do is I want you to throw those olives, those whole olives right into that oil. Throw those olives in. I want those olives to get kind of a nice brown on them. Good, nice job. Shake out your pan, get all that oil on there, good. So the reason we have a fish dish here is that fish is not only a good source of protein, but also have other nutrients. One of them, it is like omega-3. We, human beings, originally from the ocean, all right? So we're once upon a time a fish and they actually have the nutrients very much fit of what our body needs. So that is a nice about um, uh, the fish. I know a lot of people are concerned about, you know, contaminations and all of that. The truth is ocean caught fish, in spite of, you know, the concern of the ocean pollution, they're still much better than the farm raised, uh, you know, you know, be a beef yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. you know some degree dark meat of chickens and all of that it gives you a good variety because it relatively has a low fat content it is easy for uh, our patient to uh, digest the other thing is about fishy smell if you ever buy a piece of fish it really smell fishy that means they've been there for a long time they're not fresh Okay. Guys, go ahead and drop in your garlic. And then I want you to saute very quickly because we don't want our garlic to burn. So saute. Someone else in your group needs to take this lemon. You're going to hold it like this. You're going to cut your lemon in half and you're going to juice your lemon. Okay, I want you to juice your lemon over all of that loveliness. I stole your juicer again. Okay, there was just a question about shellfish. Shellfish is fine, but I would recommend not eat raw shellfish. And the reason being, one is digestion. The second thing is that they have a likelihood of a carry uh, viruses and other bacteria. But when you cook, you actually can take care of most of that issue. So let's get that pan nice and hot again. Someone in your group now needs to take that fish, right? Well, you don't take it out of the bowl. Just leave that fish in that glass bowl. I want you to add a little salt and pepper to that fish. I also, for this dish, have made you a lovely tomato butter. It is like fresh tomato heaven. It has honey in it. It has some cumin and some oregano. I don't know about you, but I like all of my tomatoes caramelized a lot of the time. So we've caramelized it all on the bottom. And it's very easy to make. I'm going to demo that for you right now. I'm just going to quarter my tomatoes. Very easy. And you know what? Here's a trick. If you don't want to run to the store and get fresh tomatoes and you have some diced tomatoes in a, in a, in a can, use that. Totally use that instead. It's not going to make a difference. So what I want you to do now is I want you to move your olives out of the way. You can make a little well. You can move them wherever move you want to, to move the them. Just move to the side. Yeah. And then you're going to put in your fish. And you're going to grill off your fish. And put just as many. Good. We are very delicate with this fish. We don't need to get a browning on this fish. 
It's a flaky fish. Okay, so now a few words about tomato. Tomato represents another color of vegetables, the red. The red color really is from a nutrient called lycopene. Lycopene is strong antioxidants, has been shown to be anti-cancer as well. It dissolves really well. Kamado tomatoes, when you cook them, particularly with the fat present. So luckily, most of the tomatoes consumed in the US is cooked. That's our tomato sauce, tomato juice, and ketchup. If you don't like how lumpy this is, just take a, put it in the blender, or you can use your immersion blender, and just um, blend everything together if that's better for you. But don't worry about taking out the seeds. Seeds are a, a part of the liquid, they're a part of the tomato, they're a part of the flavor. So with the tomato butter, I added the tomato, I added some lemon juice, I'm gonna add some wonderful honey. That's in place of our sugar. I'm gonna add a little bit of tomato paste. Add that right in there. This is a mixture of cumin, oregano, and spicy red peppers. Here's if you the spice don't again. Like spice, don't add the red peppers. I love spice. Yeah, those are all spice family though, from um, the plants. And this here, apple cider vinegar. Oh, okay. And we're gonna add that, we're gonna turn it on. We have a little bit of garlic. Get that garlic in there. You can add as much garlic as you want. Get that garlic in there, and you know what's gonna happen? In about an hour, it's gonna turn into this. Right. Okay? If, right, if you don't like lumpy and Perfect. don't like the chef, use a blender. Just use your speculum to press it down. Keep doing a couple of times. It will pretty uh, smoosh up with that. Here's your fish spatula. This is a great handy dandy little tool. I want you to flip your fish. That looks amazing. It looks beautiful. When do you know to turn it? Uh, doesn't matter. Kind of when you feel like it. I know that's a terrible thing to say. I never always asked me that. I've been doing but this look for at, so long. Look at the bottom. If you start turning to white, turn it. Okay. And then you Give have a less. Five minutes. Yeah, yeah oh, you it have looks a. Oh, so good. Right. You have a less of a chance to have trouble to flip it. Yeah, that's Love perfect. It. Let's just let it do its thing while we make our smoothie. Sound good? And more importantly, we're gonna also use the smoothie to make protein popsicles, we call it. Also, it's a very effective way of hydration. Not just simply sugar and salt, but with the proteins and the other nutrients uh, and with it. So that's what we're gonna do with the smoothie. Before we start the smoothie, what I need you to do is pour that wine over your fish. You have a little glass bowl. Pour that wine over your fish. You also have ground thyme. Sprinkle that ground thyme all over the top. Okay, so now let's get into making our smoothie. All you have to do, what I want you to do right now is just what my friend over here is doing, trying to take my job. He is slicing off those tops. Just slice off the tops of the strawberries. Well, all of you turn off your induction burner. Let's do that first. Your fish is amazing. I need these two groups to come up here with me. Put your strawberries in there for me, both of you. Good, dump those in. Plain old Greek yogurt. It's full fat, which I don't know how you feel about that, yep. but that's what I like. No, I have it at home as well. Okay. Yeah. Not a huge fan of low fat dairy products. Okay, when they're then, talking right. about low fat, often they all have to add sugar to it to make it palatable. So the best is plain, yogurt if that's what you like. I'm gonna drop in a little bit of honey. Mmm, a couple tablespoons, yes, of honey. We're gonna put that lid on, excuse me my dear. We're gonna put that lid on. Let's make sure this guy is on. Make sure the motor is all the way turned down. Because we can always turn up the motor. There's our first strawberry smoothie. We're gonna put this in the fridge for you so it's really delicious and cold. You can add frozen strawberries, you can add frozen blueberries, you can add pineapple, yes. you can add any kind of fruit, kiwi, watermelon, whatever you wanna add. And you're just gonna put it right into a, if you don't have a Vitamix, just use a regular blender. Put it all in there with the, uh, it's almond milk and yogurt and honey. Put it all together and you're good to go. Uh-huh, yeah. that's almond milk. Almond yep, milk. you got it, almond breeze. Yeah. So almond milk, if you actually like to be, th like it thin, 
then the almond milk a little bit more or you can add a little bit of water. Make to the consistency you feel Thank like. You guys, you guys. So I usually do is use an ice tray and you pour them in and then cover it with cereal wrap, put a toothpick in each um, middle of this, um, the square. They'll come out, will be good popsicles. And particularly on those days, you have absolutely no appetite, but you do not want to go to urgent care or ER to get IV fluid. You need to keep those popsicles inside your mouth all the time. So you not only get water, you electrolyze, you'll get your protein and other nutrients come from the, vet, uh, the fruit as well. If you don't want to cool it down in the refrigerator, use frozen um, you know, uh, fruit. They'll come out about right for you to have it, okay? Congratulations, your recipes were perfection and beautiful. It was lovely teaching you. We are now gonna get your meals ready. If you have any questions for me, I'm here as well, but I would like you, I'd like to turn the floor over to Dr. Lee if anyone has any more questions for her as well. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, We Claire. really appreciate it, thank you. Such a lovely day. Plant-based diet uh, are typically healthier than Western diet. Western is more of hamburger and french fries. But that, that does not necessarily mean vegetarian equals healthy completely. One of the issue is where do you get your proteins? And a lot of times when we switch, kind of moving away from animal-based to um, you know, plant-based, we end up taking in a lot of starch that we need. And if you really concerned from any reason other than you know, um, just nutrition point of view, I would have fish and chicken. And the other one we did not use is eggs on a daily basis. And that is the human being we're all about. We're on top of the food chain. Also, if you're talking about, okay, I'm not gonna eat that much beans, I'm just gonna eat vegetables and, uh, and maybe have some seeds and nuts. Do you know how much you need every day to meet your daily requirement? How much? Like a gentleman here, he probably need at least 10 pounds every day. The other plant-based actually issue we're talking about is that other than soy, None of the proteins from plants meet all our body's need. They are not complete protein. You will miss some of the amino acid. Those are the building blocks for our body. If you are gonna go just take plant-based protein, you gotta mix them up. Today I have some sweet peas. Tomorrow I'm gonna have some soy. Day after I'm gonna have some heap and mix them up on daily basis. There's a new form of uh, um, protein source, more vegetarian based, is from seaweed. Seaweed actually is a very rich source of protein. The, um, you, we actually, even here in Los Angeles have stores that have seaweed burgers, right? They actually have pretty good uh, amount of protein out of it. Not as much uh, carbohydrate starch as the beans. So it can be done but just mindful. You want to get enough protein, meanwhile, not excess amount of starch. And we can talk about cholesterol. If you eat totally vegetarian and they don't have any cholesterol coming from food, but that does not necessarily mean you're not gonna have high cholesterol. Your cholesterol is made by your liver during your sleep, whatever excess of a, a calorie you have taken in. And the feeling is Americans, we have a lot of, uh, of us have high cholesterol, it's not necessarily from the cholesterol you're taking in. It is actually from the excess of a starch. And why I say that? Because the last 20 years were so go beyond everything to go for low fat. To make food tasty, all, all the low fat food, or particularly non-fat food, they are very high in sugar. Otherwise, there will be no taste at all. It's not palatable. So I'm not necessarily here 
to push everyone to go for low fat. Um, carbohydrate, the best is come from vegetables, fruit, and whole grains. And the starch, you should have some, particularly you only can take in so little on the days you get in chemotherapy or after your surgery. You should not be taking in excess. So what I would say is on the day you're really not feeling well, try to do the best from the very bare minimum. Water is not enough. If you can just only drink clear, and that's the time the crystallites come along, okay? Crystallites basically is water with basic electrolytes and salt into it. And on top of that, you can have some sugar into it. That will be the 7-Up and also like Sprite. And you can have some of those. Apple juice come along with that. Those we call clear liquid. And you can sip on that. You can freeze them, become popsicles. If you could do well on that, next step would be what we talked about, smoothies and stuff like that. So that is number one. Number two is on the days you feel better, you do what your body feel like. That usually is enough. You don't have to be going out of the way saying, okay, today I'm good, I'm gonna have two gallons of this or one gallon of that, not necessary. So the body is very good at taking what they need. And, but they don't really overdo as well. One, some of the times when we have other issues, for example, our kidneys are not in 100% shape. If you overload salt inside your body, the kidney have to get rid of it. That's extra burden. If they cannot do it really the real time, that's the time we have legs swells up and puff it up and all of that. So just follow your body's instinct you don't have to do go all of the way. There's also a protein um, you usually see in the store called um, whey protein. Whey protein, particularly the 100% pure. Whey protein is a soluble part of the milk, not the white part when we make cheese. So that is actually a transition from clear liquid to full liquid. You can add some whey protein powder into water or crystal light or you know, some 7-ups uh, yeah, and mix up. They're still clear. You can drink that, but they will give you not only the, some sugar, the salt, water, but some protein as well. Work with your medical team. That can be your oncologist, your dietitian, or physician specializing in nutrition. Do not stop there, just try to experience with your body. Particularly when you're going through chemo, you not have reserve. You cannot afford two days going to diarrhea. So get help. Here's a specific question about digestive enzymes. Our body, one of the you know, functions digest food, or primary function digest food. The digestive enzymes are made by the pancreas, also some is from um, the liver, that's the, the bile, the juice stored up. When we eat, so release from the gallbladder, plus freshly made enzymes to help us digest food. When you are having surgery in particular, they remove major part of your pancreas and your gallbladder, and sometimes maybe more the entire pancreas, you lose the function, your body's function to make those enzymes. So-called enzymes are more like a little chefs to cook the food for you inside of you, okay? So when you don't have enough helpers, you don't have a team work for you, you may need to take enzyme that is already made in a capsule form. So that should be taken with your food as to how much you need. And the goal is not having bloating, diarrhea, and stomach discomfort. Wow, look at what you have cooked. Come up over here, look at it.
Thank you.